Hey guys, it's Russell here at Raspberry Rock. I I solved the problem one a problem with my batteries and you know me, I got to show everything. I gotta show all my all the stupid things that I do and you guys are just going to you're going to groan when I show you this, but I solved this problem and okay, let, let me show you what it was. First of all, so I run a 48 volt system. You can see right now that it's um, putting 60 point the charge controller is putting 60.4 volts in at 10.8 amps. 660 watts. It's uh, already put in three kilowatt hours today, and it's in absorbing mode. The battery voltage reads 59.8 volts right now, and the state of charge is 93%. That's pretty good. Now I run a 48 volt system. Um, typically, uh, you know, 48.5 volts would be at around 50%, which is when you want your batteries, your inverter, to shut down. <laughs> got something over there um, and but typically you want your batteries between 48 and a half volts and 50 point something volts um, if it's above 49.5 then you're above 70 percent between 49.7 and 50 you're in the 80 70 to 80 percent you know you want your batteries like that so what was happening was um, my my charge controller would charge up my batteries it would go into float mode which means you know they should be charged near full but in the evenings, as soon as the sun dropped, my, my voltage would go way low with only a few loads running. Say my computer in the fridge, it would go down to 47.7. And that's okay, because when, when I'm saying that 48.5 volts, that's at rest. At rest, it should be 48.5 or up. What are you doing, Willow? So, I decided to do some testing. Here's what I did. So this is my battery bank. I've got eight batteries and they run, and they're each six volts. So you add them together, you get a 48 volt system. So first thing I wanted to do is to make sure that this, the batteries were actually, sorry, the inverter was actually showing the proper voltage, what they really were. So if you, let me get a little platform up here. So to test the whole system, of course, I put the positive down on that end and the negative down on this end. And it was showing, yeah, 47.5 volts or whatever it was that evening that I did that testing. So I thought, well, let's test each individual battery because that could be a problem. If you had one battery that's bad or one cell and one battery that's bad, that's putting um, uh, resistance on the line, yeah, it would it, you would get lower voltage than normal. So what I did was I tested each battery separately and what I was seeing was across the whole whole bank was anywhere from 6.22 volts to 6.25 volts across the whole thing, which says to me that there's no one battery that's causing a problem. But if you do the math on that, you should be able to add six, well, multiply 6.22 by eight or six, whatever. If you add them all together, 6.22, 6.23, or 6.25, or whatever they are, you get in the range of 49.7 to 50 volts. So something's not adding up, right? And, and I knew right away that something was wrong. So I was sitting here looking at my batteries and thinking, how the heck, what the heck do I do next? How do I troubleshoot this? What could be the problem? And I noticed this connection right here was loose. <laughs> this bolt on this battery right here was loose. And I thought, how could that possibly be? Like, because that's one thing you do is you, you tighten it up pretty, pretty tight, pretty snug on all the, on the, all the battery connections. But this one was loose. And so I thought, it looks like it's just been finger tightened, actually. So I put my fingers on it to see if I could tighten it any more. And that's when I realized it was very hot. <laughs> I went, ah! And so I found the resistance in the system right here on this bolt because this one was not um, screwed in tight enough. Which is odd because it looks like the cable had a nice um flat connection on the on the battery terminal it, it looked like it was pretty connected but anyway I got my my wrenches out here and I tightened it up as tight as I could then I checked the voltage again and lo and behold I was at 50.0 volts across this across the whole system even with my loads running my computer in my in my fridge and I thought, oh shit now here's the part where you're really gonna laugh 
or really going to cry, or really going to give me shit. Um, I was trying to think, why did this happen in the first place? Because I haven't disconnected these batteries in ages. I've disconnected these two, the first two, when I moved the box out to do the work back in here in the wall. But I didn't disconnect this one. This one hasn't been disconnected since we moved the batteries from outside to inside way back in the fall. <laughs> When my buddies Ray, Ray and Ryan were here, and they helped me cut down that pine, pine tree. And so, yeah, all this time, I've been hating on my batteries, thinking I need to replace them. They're really bad. And... <laughs> just a little problem. Now, you'd think that's something I would have checked by now. <sighs> but I, I don't do everything perfectly, do I? You know that by now. Ah, anyway, i got another problem to talk about. Let's talk about that. First of all, before we get into this next subject, I want, you to, I want you to hear, I don't know if you can hear, but you hear that um, bubbly sound? That's all the batteries. Because it's a nice sunny day where they're, it's in absorption mode right now, the batteries are warming up because they're charging. So they're doing that little simmering thing. So that's important for our next step. A charge controller has three charging modes. It goes from bulk to absorption to float mode. Right now it's in absorbing mode, you can see. So now the settings for, for when it changes over are uh, from the battery manufacturer itself. The, the manufacturer states that um, you should be in bulk mode until you hit 60 volts. 60.4 volts is what I've got it set at. And then you should be in absorption mode until your amperage comes down to 9 amps. And that's because of the resistance in the batteries. When it hits nine amps, then nine amps at 60 volts, then it knows that the batteries are full and it will switch to floating mode. And at that point, the voltage will go for 54.7, or sorry, from 60.4 to 54.7, and it'll put like 100 or 200 um, watts in at a time. So right now, it's it's approaching um, the point where it's going to go into float mode, and this is kind of weird because the two days after. I fixed the problem with the batteries, it did not go to float mode. It sat there, it went down to about 12 amps and it sat there and it went, sat there for hours and hours. And while it did that, um, the batteries were bubbling the whole time and I, I kept coming out thinking, what the hell is going on? It's not, it's not coming down to the nine amps. So this is my new problem, except today it has gone. So the last couple of days it hasn't gone below 12 amps, but today it has gone. It's down to 9.5, 9.6 amps. So I'm not sure that I have a problem or not. Now the setting is, it either goes to 9 amps or it charges for 5 hours, I think the setting is, or maybe it's 6 hours in absorption. And uh, yeah, that seems like a lot. Especially since um, even before I fixed the battery problem, you know, the it would stay in absorption for a couple of hours and I would still have, you know, 50 volts at night. Like, nothing has changed that way. It doesn't... My batteries aren't any more charged because it spends more time in absorption mode. Alright, so this is weird. The voltage had gone... Or, sorry, the amperage here had gone up to 10.5, 10.6, and then the fan came on. Now the amperage is going way down, so... I guess with the charge controller heating up, something it's just a new cog in the system that I got to look at there's something new I got to keep my eye on so have I damaged my batteries by having that resistance between battery 4 and battery 5 I don't know <laughs> I don't know it's it's one of those things like the batteries are nearing their end of life a battery you know batteries like that are typically good between you know 5 and 10 years old uh, they they tend to die and they're 7 years old right now so they're getting old. Have I damaged them? Probably. You know, what else is going on? It's one of those things where I'm just going to have to watch it and see and see what's going on. And um, one of the changes I made in my charge controller is I changed that six hour absorption time down to two hours. And then I'll just watch the battery voltage at night. You know, do I still get the same battery voltage whether it runs for two hours or whether it runs for six hours? We'll see. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll just kind of play it by ear. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one last thing I want to show you guys. 
So I wired up this voltage meter, which I bought off of Amazon. Um, I got tired, really tired of running it in the outside, you know, all day or all night just to see what the voltage was. So now I can sit here inside and I can tell it's not the end, be all and end all of how your batteries are doing, but it's a good indication of of where you're at and how much power you have left in your batteries to use. So we're sitting at 59.6. The battery voltage is always going to show lower than the charge controller voltage, right? The charge controller leads it. It has a it has a, it puts in a higher potential. Anyway, at some point I'm going to um, use a little black box and. Um, make an actual nice little display unit here. It'll be cool. So that's it guys. Um, as you can see I'm a bit of a dunce <laughs> all this time thinking my batteries were garbage and I need to replace them so maybe they're going to live a bit longer which would be nice because batteries are expensive. Anyway take care guys. I hope you enjoyed this video and all that jazz. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. -bye.